Hello everybody, hope everything's well, and as always, let's jump right into this. Now, in ancient Greece and Greco-Egypt, the god Pan had signified all things. The meaning of the name of Pan is an old word denoting to close or join together. Pan is the universal agent known as Phosphorus that gives light and life to the world. Like Phosphorus does here on Earth, the god Pan was often considered as the great principle of vegetable and animal life. The ancient city of Pan was known as Panopolis. Pan is known as the goat of Mendes and can be found today in the form of the horned goat god, made famous by the Knights Templar Baphomet, 33rd degree Freemason Albert Pike. The Gnostics had held that morals it and dogma. Composed it. In the Gnostics the held body of the Holy Spirit composed and adored in the secret rites of the Sabbath or the temple of the, the, the fire body of the Holy Spirit Baphomet and it was adored in the secret rites of the Sabbath of Mendes, or the temple this is confirmed by the Greek the hieroglyphic figure of philosopher Proclus who described the hermaphroditic the goat of Orphic Mendes. hymns to be this is confirmed by the female. Greek Neoplatonist now before I read on I want to show you this picture here of the Baphomet which most people uh, Automatically something say that the, this is Satanism and this is Satan. All right. Uh, I challenge anybody to go into the Bible and give me the scripture that gives the depiction of Satan being a half man, half goat. Okay, because that depiction was taken from what I'm showing you right now. From the Baphomet and the ancient god Pan. All right, and these ancient symbolisms really, again, is talking about what's within you. All right, the positive and negative energy. All right, all right. You can see the snakes, like the do um, the double helix in the DNA. You can also see that on the back of an ambulance as well. All right. This is pertaining to the things with inside you. All right. Now, let me read the rest of this for y'all. The image of Baphomet Pan that is used in modern times was created by the French occultist Eliphas Levi, who had written in the Myster uh, Mysteries of Magic. The Baphomet of the Templars, whose name should be spelled Kabbalistically backwards. All right. Again, we're getting into the Kabbalah. All right, which is talking about inner workings. All right, it's composed of three abbreviations: Temp Of Ab or Temple Aminium Harium Pad Abidus, the father of the Temple Universal Peace of Men. According to some, it was a monstrous head. According to others, a goat-shaped demon. A sculpted casket unearthed in the ruins of an ancient commandery of the Templars, who observed by the um, Antichrist to be a Baphomenic figure conformable in, in its attributes to our goat of Mendes in the androgyny of Kalroth. It is bearded but with the entire body of a woman in one hand it holds the sun and the other the moon. Alright? Again what I just said positive, positive and negative. Joined to it by chains this virile head is a beautiful allegory which attributes to thought alone, the first and creative cause. The head here represents mind and the female body matter, the stars, embodied, bound to the human form and directed by the nature of which intelligence is the head, have always a sublime significance. The terrible Baphomet is in fact, like all monstrous enigmas of ancient science, nothing more than an innocent and even poised Hieroglyph. Author uh, Godfrey Higgins in his book, In Apocalyptus, an attempt to draw aside the veil of the static Isis, Marcus describes Jupiter in one of the Orphic hymns to be both male and female, or hermaphroditic. Cyanesis adopts it in a Christian hymn. The Pyrapus of the Entrishkins were both male and female. He who has the membrum virile with the female breast. Domestic keys, tre uh, treating of the fluidity of the uh, divine nature, cites 
Orpheus as teaching that the deity was at once both male and female to shew the generative power by which all things were formed. Proclus upon the timus of Plato cites the following. Jupiter is a man. Jupiter is also an immortal maid. And in the same uh, commentary, in the same page, we read that all things were contained in the womb of Jupiter. Pan, Osiris, and Jupiter. Like the Greek Pan, the god Osiris in e ancient Egypt was considered a god of just about all things. Osiris was the god of the afterlife, king of heaven and hell, the king of eternity, king of the living, master of souls. He also appeared as a ram in Mendes and the sovereignty of Amenti. Hence, the, the Greek Pan was the half man, the half human goat, and Osiris, and Osiris was the ram of Egypt. Both represent all things in the planet Jupiter who gave life and light to the planet Earth. All right, now we uh, just throwing out a little fun fact here that Osiris is the Greek name for Osar. All right, just wanted to throw that out there. And we'll talk about that more. Um, a later video. Now, the soul of the Egyptian god Osiris, who is Jupiter, was symbolized here on Earth with the figure of a ram or ram horns. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Osiris was murdered by his brother Set, who represents the planet Saturn and Satan. All right. In my previous articles or his previous articles, which I'm showing you here, which is on GnosticWarrior.com. I will be putting this link in the description below. Osiris in the mythology of Jupiter, I detail much of my research that connects the god Osiris with the planet Jupiter and he who is called the Morning Star. The Greek historian Herodotus had simply stated that Osiris and Jupiter were the same person. Jupiter was the king of the gods, and Osiris, in his genealogical account of the kings, the son of Jupiter and Juno, Jupiter is also the cause of all human and animal or vegetable life, and was worshipped not as a goat in Egypt, but as Osiris uh, under the figure of a ram or the green man. In ancient Greek mythology, Pan is the son of Zeus, who was also the Greek god and the sun for the planet. Jupiter. However, in Egypt in the past, the pharaohs were gods incarnated on earth as Osiris because they were the so below gods or sons of the as above planet Jupiter who were who were also depicted in artwork as green men or having ram's horns on their heads. The fact now I just want to show you a few photos here. This is a picture of uh, Moses with the horns on his head also symbolizing Half man, half goat, um, pan, all right, which is symbolizing magic, things of that nature. Understand again, this is about symbology, and the, and I can't stress this enough that it's about your own inner workings and the things with inside you, all right. It also pertains to the whole uh, Saturn mystery, okay, which is just talking about materialism and third density and things of that nature all right now when you see this pentagram when it's facing down again all right that's dealing with lower forms of nature all right or well, the B side of man okay because we can transcend these different levels that's what makes us special again I talked about that in uh, Return to Nothingness. And on the left you see that this is uh, when it's pointing up that's pertaining to uh, the evolution of man, man uh, returning back to its higher state or his or her higher state. Okay. And this last picture, okay, because Nimrod is one of the sons of Cush. All right. But when we talk about that, again, we're talking about something that pertains to your own mind all right now again here it says Nimrod as evergreen tree again all right this is um, pertaining to the tree of life the tree of life is talking about your own mind all right 
in the higher orders of that. Okay. So again, I uh, just want to say that it has nothing to do with Satanism. All right. Because remember, the etymology of the word Satan. All right. Now let me re just read this for you. The proper name of the supreme evil spirit in Christianity, Old English Satan from the Latin or the late Latin Satan. All right, from Greek Satanus, from Greek Satan, adversary, one who plots against um, another, from Satan to show amenity to pose plot against. All right. So, these people who are cultists, all right. You can call them, um, I guess, a Satan, because they're using uh, ancient hieroglyphs and ancient knowledge to, to control the masses of the people. All right. And, it, and that's even triple for uh, melanated peoples. All right. Which I've talked about before previous videos all right <clears throat> but thank you for listening and peace and balance to the ancient ones